So I thought I'd make a small walkthrough and explanation of the replication graph in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, since there's still not a whole lot of documentation, and it's pretty poor documentation, and not a whole lot of videos or tutorials on how you can actually write your own replication graph. So I thought I'd do a small walkthrough now, and I'm going to show you how I write my replication graphs for my game. So let's get stuck in. What is the replication graph? Well, it's essentially a high-level server optimization that you can use for network games. And it was initially developed for Fortnite, because with the legacy networking system that they had in place, Fortnite would just not be able to be supported. Since they have something like 100 connections and 50,000 replicated actors, it was just not going to cut it at the time. So as a result, the replication graph was, uh, was implemented and it was released as an experimental feature in 4.20, and it was released in 4.21. And this is a C++ only feature. Uh, you should not be confused by the name graph in there. Uh, there's no, no visual blueprints or anything, it's just purely C++. And how this works as a high-level server optimization is that it, it determines what needs to be replicated to a specific connection, and it does that very fast and efficient and when it determines wh how it determines what needs to be replicated is that it routes things into these different so-called nodes uh, and again you should not be confused by the blueprint nodes and when they're routed into these nodes it process the processes them differently depending on what the node is some of the concepts that are in this replication graph is that it sorts actors into groups based on their location and so we basically tell that these sort of locations in the map should never be considered for replication for this specific connection. So if, for instance, something is far away from, from you, uh, from a connection, that thing should never be able to replicate. So if you're on the opposite sides of the map, uh, one of the actors should not be able to send network updates to that specific connection. Which is, which is different from the old call distance, because right now the spots are predefined into these sort of grids, so which is a lot faster and will increase performance on the server. And it also throttles network updates uh, because of these different nodes in the grid, sp grid spatialization, these different nodes. Um, they're static, dynamic, or dormant, but we'll get more into what those, what the, what that means. But it, basically what we're doing is we're reducing network updates depending on, depending on the actor, how we're basically saying the actor needs to update this much, and we adjust it accordingly. So it will reduce a lot of bandwidth on the client. And we update actors with their owners. And so basically, if the character has a weapon in his hands, a weapon actor, we should update the weapon when we update the character. So we can basically skip the weapon processing, so we don't have to process two actors. We can only process the character and update the weapon along with the character. And we generate lists of actors that are known to all connections, uh, which, is the, which is the same as the always relevant check in the actor. And we can also do the same, but for specific connections only. So if you want, for instance, again, a weapon actor, you probably want that to be always relevant to the character that owns it. So we can specify that in the replication graph. Well, let's talk a bit more about the different nodes in the uh, replication graph. Um, nodes are basically just a class. They're just called nodes, and you should not be confused with the blueprint nodes. And an actor that's routed or inputted into one of these different nodes get processed in their own way. And some of the standard nodes that come with the engine, the, probably the most important one is the grid spatialization node. And what it does is it carves the map up into these different grid cells. And it determines if a connection should receive net updates from an actor depending on the cell that they're in. So if it's in a cell that's very far away from the connection, it should probably not receive updates from that um, different cell. And you can specify the cell size, of course, and stuff like that. And it can handle actor replication in different ways. So again, we'll come back to the static, dynamic, and dormant. State. Basically, the static state, if you route an actor to be static in the grid cell, it means that the 
update frequency should not ha happen every frame. So we can, it, so for instance, in Fortnite, their player built walls. The walls that you build, they're static because they do not need to update every frame. They do not move. They're simply static. Dynamic things uh, should probably be things, projectiles and characters, things that need to update every single frame. A dormant state is some sort of a hybrid between the static and the dynamic. So we can toggle between static and dynamic using the default um, net dormancy flag in the actor. So for instance, one of the, uh, in Fortnite you have the weapon pickup and you drop a weapon. It has physics and then it sort of settles and it stays in place. So initially when the physics is enabled we probably want it to be dynamic. Then when the physics settles we can put it to static. Uh, so we can optimize it that way. And we have the always relevant node. And again, as it says, it processes actors that should always send net, net update to all connections. Then we have the always relevant for connection node. So again, it's the same as always relevant, but only sends update to specific connections. So this one's sort of a brief overview. Uh, there are some references. Uh, you can see the wiki docs for a more detailed explanation. You can also see their live stream, which is where you have the tech lead go over the replication graph. And in the sh in the shooter game example, there is the shooter replication graph, which is or which is you can look at how they implemented uh, the replication graph in there. And you also have the basic replication replication graph, which ships with the engine by default and it's a very basic setup it's basically the bare minimum that you need to be over in order to stand the system and so what i'm going to show you now is how i write my replication graphs and provide some sort of a template and go over more more concrete in the code of what the replication graph does right and to demonstrate the replication graph here i have a very basic project um the character has a weapon that can spawn logic tiles and it can spawn some walls so it's not really ideal for a replication graph but it works for this demo um, ideally projects that should use replication graphs are large projects with a lot of connections and a lot of replicated actors but we'll use this project for uh, just as a demonstration of how we can use the replication graph so in order to use the replication graph, it is a plugin. So if you go to your plugins and you search for replication graph, uh, you enable the replication graph and you hit restart. And once your project has restarted, we can actually add a new C++ class and show all classes and search for the replication graph. And as you can see, the replication graph is an extension of the replication driver. So we'll call this DA replication graph and we'll create the class. All right, and once your project has added a new class, this is what we're left with. Um, basically your standard new object file, uh, basically nothing in there. But before we do any work on the actual replication graph file itself, I'm going to go into my default engine, the i i I'm gonna configure it to use the replication graph that we just created. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new section and script slash um, sub system oh, it's online sub system utils uh, slash dot it net driver it is. And here we're going to go replication driver class name equals to a script. And now your project module name should be defined in your build, not your build, in your um, target.cs. And dot and the new and the class of the replication graph that you just added. That should be it. And if you are using Steam, you also want to configure this for Steam. So Steam subsystem or online subsystem. So 
of system team. I think it's called Steam Net Driver. Okay. Once we've done that, we can go into our build.cs file and we're just gonna add some dependencies. So we're gonna add a private dependency mod module names dot add range and new stringery and we will add replication graph All right and once that's done we can finally go into our replication graph and we can actually start uh, doing some work the first thing that we're gonna have to do is to specify the replication graph as, as a transient class and also set the config to be engine it's very important because we did just configure it in the engine config and once we've done that the first thing that i'm going to do that i usually do in my replication graphs is that i create the different nodes so in order to do that we're going to override uh, init global graph nodes and this function basically handles creating the different grid nodes or the different nodes that we're going to use for our replication graph All right, and I'm also going to create some variables for the different grid nodes or for the different nodes that we are going to be using. So first of all, I'm going to forward declare um, the actor list grid node and the grid spatialization 2D grid node or node, sorry. And we'll create variable for the grid node and we'll call this grid node. Do the same for the actor list. And I am actually going to be using the actor list as the always relevant node. Uh, you can use the uh, normal always relevant node if you want, but I just like to use the actor list one. And we'll mark these as U properties uh, so they do not get collected by the garbage collector. And once again, the grid node is probably the most important node uh, for the replication graph. And it carves the map up into these different grids and then determines whether or not an actor in a specific grid should send the network updates to a connection in a certain grid. make a category for this all right and what we're also going to do is I'm going to be creating some settings or properties for the grid node and we'll call this grid cell size which is just going to be the size of your grid cells um, I usually keep it at um, 10,000 units and we'll do a float for spatial bias x and I usually keep this at negative 150,000 and spatial bias y negative 200,000 I usually do keep it up and we're also going to need a boolean for disable spatial rebuilding And I leave it true by default. Um, if you want to know more about this stuff, there is a live stream that the Epic de the Epic developers did, uh, where they explained a lot of the grid stuff, and they explained it pretty well. So I encourage you to watch that one.
Right, and once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and implement our init global graph nodes function. And in here, we do not need to call the super function because it already um, it doesn't actually do anything by default. And before I do anything in here, I'm going to pre-allocate some lists. Now, this is not necessary, but I just like to do it anyway. It should be able to dynamically allocate lists for you. Alright, and once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and create our grid node. And for that, we're going to go grid node equals, and there's a function called create new node. You simply just specify the type of the node that you want to create, and that's all you have to do to actually create the node. And we're going to be setting the different settings on the grid node, like the cell size to the variable that we created. We're also going to be setting the spatial bias. And that's a vector 2D. Spatial bias X, spatial bias Y. Okay, and if disable spatial rebuilding is true, what we'll be doing is we'll be adding simply the actor class to the uh, blacklist. And that way we will be disabling all spatial rebuilding um, as we are only dealing with actors. Okay, and once you've done all of that, you can call add global graph node and you pass in the grid node. And that's it. That's our grid node created. Uh, let's create our always relevant for always our always relevant node. And same thing, always roll the node equals create new node. And we're using the actor list as I described earlier. And we do not need to set any set any settings, so we'll just call add global graph node and we'll pass the always roll the node in. Okay, and that is your grid nodes created. And what I'm going to be doing now is show you how you can route or how you can handle routing actors into these different nodes. Um, and so to do that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a enum. And I'm going to be calling this uh, class rep policies. Class rep policy, I'll create it. And what we'll have in here is we'll have not routed. We'll have always uh, relevant all connections. And we'll have our different spatialization uh, routes. So, spatialized static, dynamic, and dormancy. Okay, so this is basically just going to define um, how an actor should be routed. If it should be routed into the grid cell or the always relevant node and stuff like that. So, and again, static use for actors that do not need frequent updates. Dynamic for actors that do need um, updates every frame. And dormancy is our hybrid between the static and dynamic. And this is determined by the A actor net dormancy um, enum that you can set in there. All right, and that's our enum created for this. What we're going to be creating now is we're going to be creating 
a small function called e class rep policy and get mapping policy. And we're going to be using a view class as a parameter. So to route stuff, we're mainly going to be using classes of determining what we're going to route. So instead of doing things specific by the actor, we're doing things depending on what the actor is, what class it is. So we can say, for instance, this class, for this, these types of actors, I want to route into the grid node. For these other types of classes, I want to route into the always relevant node. So, so this simply is just going to get the uh, policy that we're going to be using for the specific class that we specify. Okay. And I'm going to create another function called is spatialized. And this is going to be taking a mapping. And in here we're simply just going to return if the mapping is greater or equal to um, spatialized static. So if it's this or any one of those, then it should spatialize in the grid node. Okay, and what we're going to need now is we're going to be overriding our functions. Uh, we're going to need to override route actor add route add network actor to nodes and going to also be needing to route remove network actor from nodes and what these are going to do they're simply just going to be taking in an actor info and they're going to be routing the uh, different actor information to these specific nodes that were created so we can go ahead and implement these And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making a switch statement, I think, here. So I'm going to get the policy. Um, of the actor info data, get the class and switch statement on the mapping policy. And we'll do case. I'll lay out the different mapping first and then I'll make a default one. There we go. So right now we only really need to handle the um the grid node. We don't really need to handle the always relevant node yet. Okay, and in here we simply access our grid node and we call the add actor underscore and then whatever uh, mode you have in here. And then you pass in the actor info and you pass in global info. And that is how you route an actor into your grid node. So we just keep doing that. And that's basically it for uh, adding network actors to routing. And we can basically copy this for our remove actor function. And here we simply just call remove instead of add. And it only takes one argument, this function. So we can remove the global info. Alright, and once you've done that, you can go ahead and implement this get mapping policy. Um, this mapping policy uh, function. And for that, we're going to have to create a T class class map, and we're going to be using the T class rep policy enum that we created. We'll get the, we'll call this class rep policy. Yes. Okay. 
and this basically just maps a class to a um, mapping policy. Okay, and in here we can do return, and we can do get class, and if that's not null, maybe key reference it, and get the in class, otherwise we'll return not routed. Alright, that's how you route the different actors, how you handle the routing of the different actors into the different nodes. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be um, determining which classes or which actors that get routed where. Uh, and in order to do that, what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to be creating some arrays. I'm going to create a view class array. And we'll call these spatialized classes. And we'll need two more. I'm gonna call call this always relevant classes. And call this non spatialized classes. And we'll mark this as U property. Alright. And once that's done, we can actually go ahead and override another function called virtual void init and global act global actor class settings. All right, and once we added that, we want to call the super function. And in here, we simply are just going to be setting the rules for the actors um, to determine where they go in the mapping policy. I'm going to create a small lambda. I'm going to call this set rule. And we need to take a U class and a mapping. And what this is going to do is just it's just going to add the mapping or the class to uh, it's just going to map the class to a uh, to a mapping. There we go. And what you can do now is you can actually set rules for your different actors. So, um, for instance, what you probably want to do is you probably want to set the a info actor class to um, be always relevant all connections. Um, and for my specific game, I'm going to be including the projectile and the wall. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting the project tile to be dynamic because we want it to update very frequently. And the buildable wall to be static. So we'll do like that. So it's very simple to add or remove stuff and uh, define how they go in their application graph um, for your custom actors. And what we we'll also want to do is to set a rule for a replication graph debug actor. We want to set that to not routed. Since we do not want the actor to be handled by the replication graph. Okay. And once you've done that, the next thing that we're going to have to do is to filter out certain classes. So we'll go TRA and we'll create another new class container. And we're going to make an object iterator. 
going to be a U class. And we're just going to get the class from the iterator. And we're going to get the actor CDO. And we'll cast the CDO getting because we do not want to use the template in the CDO or get default object template because that will crash if it's um, not of an actor type. So class get default object. And do not use this template, um, as I said, use cast instead, uh, otherwise it could crash. Okay, and what we want to do now, well, this actor CDO is linked. Uh, we want to check if the actor CDO is valid. Uh, if it's not valid, or if the actor CDO is not set to replicate, we do not want to add that to our replicated classes list. And we'll also want to filter out schedule and reinstance classes. So what we'll do is we'll get the name of the class. And if the class name uh, starts with schedule underscore or the class name starts with reinst underscore then we do not want to add it to the list otherwise uh, as well okay and if it's made it through all of these checks we can add the class to our uh, replicated classes and we'll be doing a second pass on uh, on this array later on and and the init global actor class settings function. And we're just going to be adding this to the class rep policies in here. And if it's already there, we do not need to add it. Alright, once we've done that, I'm going to create a small little lambda function. We'll call this should spatialize. And we're going to take an actor in here. And we're simply just going to check, make sure the actor uh, is replicated. And the actor is not always relevant, and it's not only relevant to owner, or it's not uh, using net owner relevancy. So actor be always relevant. Be uh, only relevant to owner, or actor be use net relevant okay. so we're just simply just checking to make sure that they're not using any one of these flags and that it is replicated okay now we're going to be we want to check to make sure that we want to handle uh, the super class uh, we want to we only want to handle this class if it differs from the super class so Call U class and we'll call this super class and call get super class and we'll get the CDO of the super class and once again use a cast. And we're just going to compare the property, the replication properties of the super class to the child class. 
and if they're similar then we do not need to handle um, this class so uh, to make this a bit quicker so I'll just do this and I'll go back and change that so it's four properties that we're gonna be comparing And if they're all equal, then we're just going to continue because we do not need to handle that one. Okay. And actor CDO in the right hand side, we're going to change the property to be always relevant. Um, be only relevant to owner. And finally, compare be use the owner relevancy okay and we'll make another if statement and if the child actor should not spatialize but the parent actor should spatialize then uh, we're gonna add this to the non-spatialized classes All right, and outside of this, finally, that we're going the final things that we're gonna have to do inside of this iterator is we're gonna check whether or not the actor is spatialized. We're gonna check to make sure that. Well, first, we're gonna check to make sure if the actor CDO is spatialized. Then we're gonna go set rule. We'll set it to dynamic. Otherwise, if actor CDO, uh, if it's always relevant and we're not only relevant to the owner, then we'll set it to, we'll set the class rule to be always relevant all connections. And we can continue now outside of our iterator. And what we're going to do now is we're going to be explicitly setting classes, uh, replication data info of our classes. So there's a lot of useful things that you can do when you explicitly set stuff. You can change the call distance, you can change the, um, you can throttle the update frequency and stuff like that. Um, and what I did for one of my other games is I explicitly set the call distance of my pawns to be one kilometer. So I'll show you how I did that. We'll create an, an array for explicitly set classes. And I'll create another lambda called that class info, which is just going to be setting a uh, F class replication info data to a uh, specific class that we provide. So, get class and a F class replication replication info, and call this rep info. And in here we're going to go global actor replication info map set class info in class and rep info. And we're also going to be adding the class to our explicitly set classes. Okay. And now you can actually create your F class replication info. Um I'm going to call this F pawn class info. So you can set, there's a lot of things that you can actually set in these uh, classes. So you can set the actor channel frame timeout so you can 
uh, timeout frames for application. You can set the call distance, uh, distance priority, a lot of stuff that you can set in here. So I'm gonna be setting the call distance and um, I'm gonna set it to 300. 300,000 units squared. And then we can just use the lambda that I created and we'll go APON static class and we'll pass in the info that we created. And that's how you explicitly set stuff for classes. So you can add your uh, custom explicitly set stuff down here. Uh, but what we also need to do is we're now going to iterate through our replicated classes uh, up here that we created. And we're going to be setting the F class replication info for those. We'll call this replicated class and our replicated classes. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to make sure that this replicated class is not explicitly set. So we will do, or if it's not a child of an explicitly set class. So we'll do explicitly set classes one by predicate. And we're gonna turn if the replicated class is a child of one of the classes that's explicitly set. And if we actually found the result for that, then we wanna continue. Once we've done that, we will create a bool b spatialized equals is spatialized and we'll go class rep policies dot get check and replicated class uh, f class replication info class info and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a new function and we'll call this void init class replication info. This is going to take a new class. Uh, actually, it's going to, first of all, it's going to take a, a replication class uh, info. Info, then it's going to take a class, then we'll call B uh, specialized. We'll also be passing in the server max tick rate so we can handle the, um, the update frequency. Okay, and we'll implement that later. We'll continue with our other function for now. And so what we'll do is we'll call init class replication info, class info, replicated class, be spatialized, and net driver, net server, max tick rate. And global actor replication info map dot set class info, replicated class, class info and that's basically all that we have to do for this function um, we can implement the other function that we just created and this one is going to be very basic what it's just going to do is we're just going to get the um, actor CDO We're just going to be setting the call distance and the replication period frame uh, adjusted to the server tick rate. Mm. 
in class. Okay. And if be spatialized is true, then info dot call distance squared equals to the default call distance that's been set in the actor. And we also want to set the replication um, period frame, and which we're going to adjust to the server um, server tick rate. So we'll divide the server tick rate by the net update frequency. So we'll do a max min 32 and f math round to round to flow server tick rate divided by CDO and then update frequency. A one in there and we're gonna have to cast this. We'll do it anyway. Alright, there we go. That is this function implemented. And that is all that you have to do to uh, route actors or determine how you should route actors into different nodes. Right, the next thing that we can do in our replication graph is to implement our always relevant for connection node. What I'll actually do is I'll create my own custom node. Because I eventually want to handle level streaming. But um, I'll also show you how you can create your own custom node. So all you need to do is create your own class. Which just needs to inherit from the uh, replication graph node. Always relevant for connection. And mark this as a U class. And generated body. That's all you have to do to create your custom uh, grid node. Uh, it is encouraged, or not your, grid, your custom replication graph node. Uh, it is encouraged that you do write your own custom uh, nodes for your game. Uh, for instance, the um, Fortnite I know have a player state frequency limiter. They kind of round robin the player states that uh, their replication because they're kind of big. So. Uh, We'll forward declare this just in case. Alright, and what we can do now is we can override another function. Init connection graph nodes. So this initializes uh, graph nodes specific to a replication graph connection. Since this always relevant node is going to be existing on... Uh, uh, it only exists on a connection. It doesn't exist in the replication graph itself. And we can implement this function. And what we need to do in here is simply we need to create a new replication graph node that we just created, our custom one. Create new node and specify the type. And add connection graph node node and pass in the connection manager. That is all you have to do to create a always relevant for connection node. Uh, nothing else has to be done. And what we can actually go ahead and do now once we created that is we can handle level streaming uh, in the replication graph. And in order to do that, we're going to create a array in our uh, custom node that we created. This is just going to take an F name and uh, we'll actually set the allocator to 64. And we'll call this always relevant stream streaming levels. So this is just going to store the different levels and anchors that we need to, um, that needs to be replicated across level streaming. Okay, and we're also going to need to create two functions. We're going to call these on client level visibility add. So this is just called when the um, 
a level streaming pops in basically. And it's going to need a U world parameter as well. I will create another one for when it's removed, but this one only needs the level name parameter. Okay. And we'll also create a void called reset world game state. Uh, actually reset game world state. And we're gonna have to override a function called uh, gather actor lists for connection. So this basically assess it gets the list of actors that should be uh, replicated for the connection. Go back to these later. All right, and we need to go back up into our replication graph. And in here, we are going to create a public array or public map. Actually, it's going to be it's going to be f name and f actor ref list ref u. We'll call this always relevant streaming level actors. Yeah, it just maps actors that needs to be relevant across streaming levels. Okay, and we'll also have to, in our replication graph, override reset reset game world state. And we will implement that one. And what we're going to have to do in here is we're going to have to iterate through our connections and um, call the reset game world state in our always relevant for connection node. So we'll call the super function. And in our always relevant streaming level actors array, we'll empty that one. And we're going to iterate. We're going to make a connection list for our connections and the pending connections. And we're going to iterate for our replication graph. Uh, replication graph connection. For our iterator of the connection list. And even another iterator for, to, to iterate through the different nodes that are connection specific. And get connection graph nodes. And in here we're just going to cast to our always relevant for connection node. Connection node passed in. And if the node is valid, we're going to be calling the uh, reset game world state function that we created. All right, and then what we're also gonna have to do in our in our um, where is it? init connection init connection graph nodes, and we're gonna have to bind a function on the connection manager called on client level visibility level name add. We're going to add a u object. And this is going to be user object, it's going to be the node, and we'll bind our on level visibility add function that we created. And we'll do the same for the remove one. Just like that. 
that is our, and that are our events that have been bound so that will now call the events that we created in our custom node and what we're also going to need to do is go into our into our route add network actor nodes and route remove network actor from nodes and we're going to need to handle uh level streaming in here so go always relevant all connections we'll create a case for that and if actor info dot streaming level name equals no name then always relevant node notify add network actor actor info and so that's how you add or remove actors from the always relevant node is you call this notify add or remove network actor and you pass in the actor info for the actor otherwise a factor ref uh, list ref view we'll call this rep list equals always relevant streaming level actors dot find or add actor info dot streaming level name and rep list we will prepare this for writing and then we will add the actor or from our actor info okay and practically the same in the uh, in the remove uh, in the remove uh, function we just want to call the remove uh, function for this and we do not need to prepare for routing we just simply just need to remove okay now we can implement our custom functions in the uh, in our custom node that we created we'll start with the reset game world state uh, we'll create some create some separation here and in here we're just going to be calling what's relevant streaming levels dot empty okay and our callback functions These are simply going to be doing that and remove level name. And this one's simply just going to add the level name. So very simple. And finally, our overism function. All right, and in this function, we want to call the super gather. Here we go, pass in the parameters. And we're going to be getting our replication graph by just getting the outer of this object, which should be the replication graph, because we use the um, um, we use the function in the replication graph to add this node. should do a cast check here so just it should always be the replication graph that's the outer of the replication graph nodes so we'll create a f per connection f per connection actor info map connection actor info map is going to be parents dot connection manager actor info map and we'll create a map uh, f name and f actor rep list ref view. And this is going to be our always relevant streaming level actors. And this is going to be equal to their replication graph and our map that we created in there for our all is relevant streaming level actors. And I might, uh, yeah, it should be accessible, so that's just a bug there. Um, and we we're going to be creating a reverse loop. Always relevant streaming levels is the one that we want to do. Negative one. 
Finding x is greater or equal to zero. We get a negative idx. Okay, so we'll get the streaming level name. Well, it's relevant streaming levels index. And we'll get the pointer from our replication list. And if the list pointer is spell pointer, then always relevant streaming levels, and we want to remove at swap idx one to false, and continue the iteration. Otherwise, we will get the factor replist refu reference, call this replist, e reference our list pointer. And if the replist.num is greater than zero, we're going to be checking dormancy for uh, for the actors in the replication list. So we'll create a boolean v all dormant. We'll set this to true initially. We're going to iterate through our replication list and factor replist. Let's type actor for our replist and f connection replication actor info connection actor info equals connection actor info map dot find or add actor and if connection actor info b dormant on connection false then b all dormant equals false and we'll break the loop otherwise if uh, none of the actors were flagged to be dormant uh, to be not dormant sorry then if that's true otherwise params dot out gathered replication lists dot uh, add replication actor list rep list. Otherwise, if all of them were dormant, then always relevant streaming levels dot uh, remove at swap idx one false. Okay. And that is all that you have to do to create your custom relevant streaming or uh, your custom. Uh, always relevant for connection node and how you handle level streaming in the replication graph. Alright, and the next thing that we're going to do in the replication graph is that we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can set up the dependent actor list, um, which I talked about earlier, uh, updates an actor when the actor that it's dependent on updates. So for instance, in this example, I'm going to be using a weapon that I have, a weapon actor. And I'm going to make the weapon dependent on the character, if the character has the weapon in its hands. So then we can skip processing the weapon and we can only process the characters. To do that, I'm going to create a, uh, a multicast delegate. And it's going to need three parameters, and I'm going to call this on new weapon. The first one's going to have to be our character. Uh, it's going to be a pointer, and the last two are going to be the weapons. Okay. Alright, and this is going to have to be in public and it's going to have to be a static event we we'll call this on new weapon then in your character cpp file you have to go f on a new weapon character and on 
new weapon. And then whenever your character changes his weapon, right now I only handle it in gameplay. Ideally when your character changes his weapon, you want to broadcast this delegate on the server. Since remember the replication graph only exists on the server. We'll call this weapon. Then it's going to be null because the weapon is null, so um then if you go into your replication graph, we're gonna have to create a function or a callback for this event. We call this on character new weapon. And it's gonna have to have the same parameters. So a character on a weapon call this new weapon and all weapon. Okay. Mark is a Q function. And we can implement that. So the first thing that we want to do is to make sure that the pawn is valid. And we we'll also want to make sure we want to compare the world of the pawn to the world of the replication graph. We want to make sure that they're similar. And if they're not similar, we simply return. And this is important because they can potentially be different, the worlds, and in that case we do not want to handle this. So we, we're going to have to include first the character, we're also going to have to include the uh, actor that we're adding dependent on the character, which is in this case the weapon. Okay, and if we go back up into here, to do that. Then we're going to be getting a f. Uh, we're going to be getting the f global actor replication info. Actor info equals global actor info map, and we'll get from the pawn. We'll get the actor info from our pawn, and from there we can access our dependent actor list, and we can prepare it for writing and want to add the new weapon to our dependent actor list and remove the old weapon from our dependent actor list. And you do want, if you add something to the dependent actor list, you have to remove that actor before it is destroyed. From You have to remove it from the dependent actor list before it is destroyed. So ideally, before you call the destroy function on your actor, you have first have to call an event to remove it from the dependent actor list of whatever actor that it is dependent on. Otherwise, it will crash. So, old weapon, and we'll go actor info dot dependent actor list dot remove, and it will be old weapon. Okay. And actor info the dependent actor list add we want to add the new weapon. And we're going to be binding this event and we're going to be binding it in our in our um in a global actor class setting. So we're gonna be doing that at the bottom of that function. So So we'll go a character on new weapon, add you object, do this, and you application graph on character new weapon. And that is how you set up the dependent actor list, uh, how you add something to a, to a dependent actor list of another actor. And in this case, we add the weapon, remove the old weapon uh, to the character dependent actor list. Alright, and the final thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to set up the gameplay debugger for the replication graph. So this is pretty useful for debugging. So what we'll first do is we will create a a we'll create a um, small event and when using the game, game plane debugger, you always want to pre-process it out with the with underscore gameplay debugger. 
make sure to end that. And void on gameplay debugger owner change. Okay, gameplay debug gameplay D de category replicator debugger and a player controller old owner. Okay, and we need to forward declare this. And we're also going to be creating a function uh, u replication graph node always relevant for connection get always all uh, get always relevant get always relevant node and we're going to be passing in a player controller we're going to be getting the uh, always relevant node from a play controller. Make that our custom one. Okay. And we will implement that and implement that. Make sure to also process this out. And okay. And the thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to include a um, we're going to have to include the gameplay debugger. And include gameplay debugger category replicator. And Forgot. We'll actually do this and go engine level script actor, and we're gonna go back to our inner global actor settings, and I'm gonna set a rule for that. Uh, a level well, script actor, and we'll not route that either. Okay. Then we can go back to our functions that were created. And uh, actually, before we do that, we're gonna we're gonna bind the event, which we're gonna do here, where we bound our always the oh, um for our dependent actor list. And again, use the flag. We'll pre-process it out. And a gameplay debugger category replicator on uh, notify. Debugger owner change. Add you object. And our replication graph. On gameplay debugger owner change. Okay. And then we can go back. We can implement this. Um, this uh, always relevant for uh, uh, get the always relevant for connection node from our player controller. So to do that, we will first make sure that the player controller is valid, and at the bottom here we're just going to return null pointer, and that means that all the checks failed. We're going to get the net connection from our player controller. Make sure that that is valid. And then if the um, replication graph connection from our connection is valid, um, we'll get that the replication graph connection using the find or add connection manager. Then we can pass in the net connection. Then we're going to iterate through our nodes again. Uh, 
connection node graph connection get connect get connection graph nodes then we'll again we'll pass to our type and if the node cast succeeded we return the node all right now let's implement this um gameplay debugger on the change um callback so if we did this if the always relevant for connection node um node is get always relevant node old owner so if that node is valid then node um okay so we're gonna create a property called gameplay debugger in our custom node but it's going to complain for now but we're gonna be adding that property in just a second and so we're gonna be getting the debugger yeah get replication owner there we go i'm gonna set that to the debugger all right then if we go to our custom always relevant for connection node in here we can create a property for our uh, for our gameplay debugger just needs to be public like that and a gameplay debugger category replicator gameplay debugger initially set to null pointer and end if that okay and all right once we've created that property we can go into our into our gather actor list for connection uh, function in our custom always relevant for connection node and here at the bottom We'll go if with underscore gameplay debugger. We'll end that. Then if the gameplay debugger is valid, then application actor list uh, conditional add gameplay debugger. Okay. And then if we go back up into our replication graph. Uh, in a global actor class settings we are also going to set a rule for the gameplay debugger so set rule a gameplay debugger category replicator static class and we'll set the we'll set it to not routed because we do not need to handle that one all right and once you have added the rule we can go into our project um, build.cs file and in here what we're going to do is we're going to be adding the gameplay debugger so first we're going to make sure that the target config is not shipping nor test Tests either and make sure that the target dot the build developer tools or b target config and then privacy private dependency module names dot add gameplay debugger and public defini definitions dot add with underscore gameplay underscore debugger 
equals one. Otherwise, we set the with underscore gameplay debugger to zero. Alright, and that's all you need to do to set up the uh, gameplay debugger or the replication graph. Alright, and now once you've restarted the editor, you now play in the editor, and we can shoot some projectiles, and we can spawn a wall. Now if you open your console and type net dot rep graph, and here you have all the debug options for replication graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, print graph. It's going to take a while. Now if you look into your console, it's now printed the replication graph into the console, the different nodes. And as you can see, first it prints out the grid spatialization node, and it prints out all of the different grid cells. And you can see in the static, uh, in the static part, we have the wall that we built. And you remember, we set the, uh, we set it to be routed into static, the player build walls. And as well, we have the, um, the dynamic, we have the projectiles, we also have the character in there, let's remember. And it lists these, and we can see actually which grids that some of these stuff are relevant for. So if we go down to grid, let's say a si 16, we can see that the, um, the walls and some of the projectiles are not valid because of their call distances. They're not relevant anymore, but the character is. So it's really cool, and if you go all the way down, it now prints the um, well, things that are always relevant for all connections, which is the actor list, that's the world info, game state, and the player state. And we have our always relevant for connection, and we didn't actually add anything to that, but uh, we could use the um, network notify, network add, uh, and remove functions to add stuff for that. So um, that's basically everything that you need to know. It's a very brief overview of the replication graph and how you can write your own replication graph. I will be uploading this project to GitHub and I'll also be providing a template replication graph for the, that you can use for your game. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to um, make sure to put them in the comments and I will make sure that I do my best to answer them. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.